Hello everyone. I hope you guys had an amazing weekend. You know what today is? Today is the day that we reveal our big project for Decorate Your Life here on YouTube, Etsy, and her website utilizing her digital collection, uh, collection her new one, which is called From Cradle to Stage. Um, of course, all links in my description box about how you can get your hands on this kit or any of her past kits. My discount code will be up here on the screen, Dahlia10. As always, it will save you 10%. I had a blast with this collection. Now, if you want to know the backstory, you need to go check out um, Decorate Your Life's video. But this is all I got left, guys. Um, I have the two cover sheets, which I am not <laughs> going to uh, toss. As a matter of fact, I was thinking of doing some 3x3 three three cards using these little images. Um, I have two full sheets left of these two designs. I have a piece of this one left. And then I just have my cutoff, my scraps. A lot of little strips. But I pretty much used almost everything. I did use the flower. I was going to do a dangle, but the project turned on me and... The spine would not have been enough for that. I was going to use some bows, but then I ended up tearing it off, and you'll see why. I, uh, that's all I have left out of that tr uh, trim. Um, I did use the ruffle, and I did not use the charms because, again, I was going to... Um, I was going to do a dangle, and um, you'll see. But anyway... There it is, and I keep all her embellishments that she sends us with the kits in um, a pouch. So if I don't use it in this kit, I'll use it in another one. And there it is. So in here, you can see the pouch. How I used, I started with those. Those were too big. I went to the next one. Those were too big. This is all I have left of the trim because I did use um, a lot of that. But this is where I keep everything, so this way, um, I can potentially use it on another, um, design kit. Everything always, um, meshes so well. I even pulled these out that she has sent. So, <laughs> and there it is. I keep them all together, um, for future use for her, her collection. So, that is the paper, guys. Be sure to check out my description box also. All the design team members are there. And we all do different, guys. We all do different. So, you are definitely going to find inspiration there. So, on with my project. I decide, I just can't get away from doing albums. However, this time, this one is a zigzag. Isn't she beautiful? So I used that trim in the front. There goes the pearls. I had these words in my stash. Um, and I, I was, this is what they originally looked like. And I didn't know whether I wanted to use Inspire or Imagine. But I opted with Believe. That's what I chose. And I heat embossed that with some gold um, embossing powder. I pulled out two stars. I pulled out some leaves and did them all in gold. There goes the beautiful rose flower that she that Sandy has sent. And then I just tucked the leaves underneath. And then I even used the pins. I've never used this in my crafting. I had some micro beads that I um uh, tucked in there and I think it absolutely came out beautiful uh, gold undertones under the paper zigzag stitching there goes that one finished on the sides you see it would have been too narrow to and then there would have been no really no room in there and then here is the back absolutely pretty guys and if you want to know how I put this together, I do have a tutorial at the right after the flip. But uh, before we go inside, let me just show you. It is a zigzag. So there it is. You can stand it up. 
leave it open, really pretty, or, you know. So it has a magnetic closure. I did about three, three or four magnets, and I was still iffy whether it was going to hold, but I'm glad it did. It's finished on the inside, and then I sparkled her hair. I don't know if you can see it, and the chandelier, just the, the, the gems. So this is the front cover. It flips to the left and then it also flips to the right. So we're gonna go left. And in the tutorial, I did, when I first started doing this, I was like, okay, I wanted to do each page different, but then I decided um, after I put this page down that I wanted to do mirrored. So in the tutorial, you'll see this is mirrored and this is actually two different sizes. So I, equal, um, I made them equal in the tutorial. Here is where I use that trim, and then it opens up, and then I supplement it with a blush paper collection from um, Recollection. So this is blush. And then this side goes this way. Here we have two pockets, and the image continues, and there she is with a with a photo mat and I didn't put anything on the back because I have to be very mindful that this doesn't get too chunky because you need room for pictures so and of course these photo mats are removable there she is and then that's her So normally when I do my tutorials, I'll do one first, and if I like the way it comes out, then I'll go back and do a second. So um, this is the second one that I did to film the tutorial that I'll make another album with. Um, here is where I had the bows, and it, it made it too bulky there, so I had to take them out after I hot glued them on and had my paper down. So... It damaged the paper just a little bit underneath, so I ended up grabbing um, gold scallops just to um, have there. And then back here is, and again, all the pages are mirrored, so how pretty that is. And on this one, I have this image with two photo mats. And she's like a surprise underneath. It breaks up the paper. And then I have this one here. And then, of course, everything is finished underneath the flaps. And that's the last page there. So it's really one, two, three page spreads on one side. And three page spreads on the other. So on this one, they adorable. Look at her. I thought this was so cute side by side and then I had to cut into these two pages because the sizing that I chose didn't allow me to just use one sheet so I use the top on one and the bottom on the other this flips down everything is finished underneath flip over again two side pockets I was so tempted to add some lace something here but again I had to be mindful of the bulk but I like the simplicity of it because it highlights the images so there is that one and her again look how pretty that looks just like that uh, but I added two extra photo mats because I don't know when to stop and then here are this is the last spread and again the beautiful ballerinas the trim they're all mirrored and there you are and all have magnets so this is what's on the back it's just places for you to put your pictures and that's the last spread so absolutely had a blast doing the zigzag album Again, I've been pushing myself to do things um, I've always wanted to try and never had the opportunity to do it. And I'm having so much fun. So there she is, guys. So again, the tutorial is going to follow right after this. So if you want to um, 
check it out hang in there and um remember dahlia 10 will save you 10 percent off of um, this digital collection at any collection in on sandy's website a link to jenny is also there as well as the rest of the design teams i strongly encourage you to um subscribe to jenny and to to sandy if you love her paper collections you don't want to miss it i'm so excited and ooh, i can't wait to see what she's gonna uh, release for may so without further ado again thank you for watching as always stay blessed stay healthy stay safe and stay tuned for the tutorial that's gonna start right now all right let's get started so to build the cover all my paper is 110 pound card stock you're gonna to need to cut two pieces that measure six and a half by eight and a half. Two pieces. And on the six and a half inch side, you're gonna score at one inch on both pieces. This is the front uh, flaps that you saw, and then these are their sides. For the back cover, you're gonna to need to cut a piece that is 10 and a half by eight and a half. And with the 10 and a half inside on the top, you're going to score at one inch and at nine and a half inches. And that's it for the scoring and the cutting for the cover. So I am going to fold these and we're going to build the cover really quick. Okay, you want to give it a good burnish because you really want the creases to be predominant. So your book will close right, it'll sit right. All that good stuff. So that's the back. This is the front. And I already put my um, my score tapes. Now, when I did mine, I also used wet glue. But for the video, we're just going to go with the score tape because it goes faster. Okay. So, I line these up first just to get an idea to make sure it's a dry fit, everything works out good, sits well, right? I'm gonna lay this flat. Sorry guys. So, this is how I do it. I get it right in there, make sure everything is lined up straight on the top and on the bottom. I am going to flip it over, I'm right handed, so I have to flip it over this way. And then I'm gonna open and then I am going to remove the score tape and then close it in on itself. Give it a good burnish and we already got one side. We're gonna do the same thing to the other side. Okay, so it's gonna go like this. I like my seams to be on the bottom. Okay, so let me not confuse you, right? I like my seams to be on the bottom, so I'm going to grab it there, make sure everything is lined up nice, hold it, flip it over, and then now I can, while I'm holding it, I can pull off the backing on the score tape. And then get rid of good press, and that easy, we have our cover built. That's our cover. The next piece is the zigzag portion, which are the, the pieces that are going to build off the back cover. So we're going to build that separately. You're going to need seven pieces. Seven pieces that measure nine and one eighth by eight and a half. And with the nine and one eighth inch side on the top, you're gonna to score a half an inch, and then you're gonna score at five and seven eighths, which is the next line over. So it'll give you that little gusset in between. And you're gonna do that for all seven pieces. Now I burnished the first line because it makes me it makes it easier to get the one nearer the score tape. Then if I did the one on the outer layer, then try to do the one on the inner. Okay, I'm going to give that a good burnish. So for the sake of the video, I started putting them together. 
so as you can see I already have quite a few so this is piece one piece two piece three piece four piece five and I'm gonna do two with you for you to see now that little gusset just gives you room in between the pages to be able to um, build on the inside so if you're building it from from the very first piece you're gonna bring that piece completely down now, I did make some some adjustments and this is one of them so even though this is nine and one eighth by eight and a half you're gonna you can score it at the half inch mark and then the one eighth at originally that was my design you can eliminate this one eighth or just fold the whole thing down so there's no score lines and that will just get glued to the back cover okay so you can either do that or you can just cut it to be nine inches by eight and a half score and a half and then put the whole thing down it the whole thing is going to get glued down once you have one with the hinge on one side on the opposite side is where you're going to glue the other one so you can see it's on the opposite side for where the hinge is at and then once you glue that one down you're going to take your next piece which is this one and you're going to glue it on the opposite side okay so your hinges are on one side and you're going to glue the other hinge on that side so this is this piece now this piece got glued onto the opposite side so you get that whole zigzag and your hinges are opposite ends okay so here we are this is where i'm at now this gets really long so i kind of fold it in on itself so this is going to go here right and i always remove a little piece of the score tape bring it on the outside just so i can line myself up before it sticks hopefully i can do this without getting my head in the shot once i feel good that it's nice and even then i can release the tape okay now, there it is stuck down and then this is where i'll come and reform that one eighth Okay, so we did that one. I'll do one more with you. Okay, I'm gonna bring this back. You can see that in glue all the way. All right, so this is the last one. It's already folded. Okay, I'm up to where my score tape is at. The hinge is folded flat. I'm gonna release just a little bit, and then I'm going to line myself up as best I can make sure I'm even on all sides and when I'm happy I give it a press hold it and just pull the tape out and that's it and let me reform my my hinge and make sure that it's burnished out so that is the piece that's the zigzag portion of it okay this now will get glued completely flat inside the back piece. Again, these are, um, I had this filmed as I was doing the other ones, so I already had all this cut and I wasn't going to start trimming again. So you can essentially just glue this whole thing down completely flat. And that'll be your zigzag portion. I like to build my pages before I bind it into the book. It just makes it easier. So this is page, the very first thing that you're going to see. And then this will now be page one and two. So this is like a beautiful picture, um, similar to what I had there. That's what you can put there. Um, but when I'm referring to pages, this is one and two. So to do page one and two, I did everything mirror. So whatever's here, opposite here. Okay, I had to edit something out because I did make some changes to this. So for pages one and two, you're gonna need two pieces that that measure seven and a quarter by eight and a half. So I ended up bringing this down just a little bit. 
And on the seven and a quarter inside, you're gonna score a half an inch and you're gonna do that for both pieces. So this piece will be the opening, the little flap on the left, and this one will be the one on the right. This is another change that I did. Um, early in the video in the flip through, you saw I had them both this way. I decided to turn it this way because I think that's when I realized I wanted to do everything mirrored. So don't do what I did in the video. We're going to do it the right way here. Again, just taking a little piece off, lining myself up as best I can, evenly, give it a hold, and release. That's page one. For page two, we're going to do the same thing, and you can open your book out to make it easier. I strongly suggest that after you build your pages, put it back in the orientation that it belongs. If not, you will confuse yourself. So this one is going to go on the inside gusset, inside score line, right? Because that's my gusset. I'm going to line myself up as best I can, make sure my pages are even, hold it, and pull. Okay, bring it back. And this is page one and two. Easy peasy. For pages three and four, uh, that is, what do we do for three and four? Oh, these are the pockets. So you're gonna cut two pieces that measure four and three quarters by eight and a half. And on the four and three quarter side, you're gonna score a half an inch. Again, we're doing everything mirrored. Okay. So we're going to remove just a piece, bring it all over, open yourself up so you're nice and flat. Okay, make sure you stay on the right side of that score line. This gets really big. <laughs> it gets really big. I don't think I, I don't think I can do something small. All right, give me one second. I'll bring you into frame. That's good there. I'm gonna pull that out and give it a good press. Get back into the orientation, and this will be glued down. Now I don't glue this down until after I lay my paper on the inside, and I usually bring my paper right about here. Another tip, so your photo mats don't snag, you can take some scotch tape or um, packing tape and just make it a nice, put a little piece of tape here over the seam so it doesn't get caught, but that's that. All right, on this side, as a matter of fact, I should do that. Let's make tape, because I know I will forget. Um, one second, guys. Let me just get this going. Okay. I have a little bin. That's my trash. Off to the side. Okay, so you take a piece of tape. And because this is a pocket, you don't want anything to get caught up in there. So just put a little piece of tape over the seam, give it a good press. Another one here, give it a good press, and a piece in the center. So now whatever you slide in there won't get caught up on that, on, hooked up on the paper. All right, so let's do the same thing on this side, on page four. So we're just going to open this up so we have some room, and we're flat. And we're going to release a piece, line ourselves up without going over that score line. Okay, hold it, and oops, I shift it, release. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. 
before I forget, because I get so excited when it comes time to decorate. And sometimes I forget about this. And it really makes a difference, guys. It really makes a difference. I strongly suggest it. Okay. Don't have to go all the way to the edge, because what you're putting in the pocket is not going to go all the way. Okay. Get back into our orientation. And just a quick recap. This is the very front that you see. This is pages two, one and two. This is pages three and four. So these are pockets. And now we're on five and six. So for five and six, it's two bottom pockets with a flap on the top to hold it closed. And I'll cover magnets with you guys at the end. Um, Loki says hello. For the bottom pieces, you're gonna cut two that are four and a quarter by eight and a half. And that's two pieces. And these I did not add gussets to, so this will get glued straight down. And I don't do it until I lay my paper on the inside. So I'm just going to cut that there. I'm sorry about Loki. And then this is the one that's going to go on this side. So I'm just going to clip this in because I know it belongs there. And then I'm going to write pocket. Right in the middle somewhere, because it's going to be covered. For the piece that's going to hold everything that you put in the pocket down, you're going to need two pieces that measure two inches by six and a half inches. And on the six, I'm sorry, uh, six and a half inch, inch. Try that again, Dahlia. Sorry about the confusion, guys. I don't do many tutorials. I'm learning. On the six and a half inch side, you're going to score at half an inch. So the piece is two inches by six and a half, and on the six and a half inside, you're gonna score a half an inch. And this is the piece that's gonna sit right up here and hold everything that you put in that pocket close. So I'm not gonna glue that right now. Again, I like to um, get everything situated. And then this is the part that's glued down to the book. So we're done with the flipping to the left. Now we're gonna build what's on flipping to the right. So when you flip the whole thing, this is pages one and two. Again, they are mirrored. Let me just scroll down my notes, guys. We're gonna need two pieces. Okay, two pieces that measure five by eight and a half. So this is eight and a half by five. On the five inch side, you're gonna score at half an inch on both pieces. The other two pieces you're gonna need measure six by eight and a half. So it's six by eight and a half. And on the six inch side, you're gonna score at half an inch. And these are the pages that build on each other. So we're going to put this one down first. Okay, we're gonna give that a good burnish. And then I'm going to open this up so I am as flat as I can be. Okay. And this is where we are, we're working on. I need a bigger desk. <laughs> I do, I do, if you used to see what's around me. Okay, so this is going to make sure it's with in front of that score line it's not hindering it's even with the page okay and then when I'm happy I'm gonna hold it down and then I'm gonna release the backing while we're there we're going to then take that smaller piece Loki my darling oh my goodness and we're gonna do the same thing and that one it's going to go right on top of this one. So we're just going to even it up equally and hold it. Okay, am I good with that? Yes, I'm happy with that. And then we're going to release. And we're going to give everything a good burnish. So you have that flip, then you have this flip, and then you have the back. So let's get reorientated. So this all goes underneath. That's what we already did. 
Okay, and then we're gonna work on this side. So we're gonna do exactly the same thing. You can put this one on top of this one first if you want to, then put the whole thing down. Um, I just like working piece by piece because if I need to make any changes before I do that, let me pull this out so I'm flat. I hope the light is strong enough because the sun is setting. I wasn't planning on doing this today, but I might as well. All right, and then we're going to do the same thing on the next one. Bit. This one's going even with the one we just laid down, right, right on top of it. Hopefully my head is not in the way. And when you're happy with it, hold it and then release the paper. Did I grab all of it? Nope, it tore. I gotta go fish. Where did it? Okay. grab it and pull that little piece out and bring it back okay so this goes back underneath get reorientated and there you have your double flip now we're gonna flip again and now we're on three and four Loki my darling these are two side pockets Again, I clip them in until I lay my paper, but the pieces measure three and a half by eight and a half. So this is three and a half by eight and a half. On the three and a half inch side, you're gonna score a half an inch on both pieces. And these are just going to be here and here. And I'll glue that once I put my paper. So I'll just paper clip those in. Easy peasy. And then for the last two, which is five and six, you can go five, six, it doesn't matter, they are mirrored. We're going to need, again, two pieces that measure six and three quarters by eight and a half. And on the six and three quarter inch side, you're gonna score at half an inch on both pieces. And then the other two pieces we are going to need measures four and three quarters by eight and a half and on the four and three quarter inside you're going to score at half an inch and this is exactly what we did on the other side okay. and just score everything and once we lay this down we can um, talk about magnets before we glue it into the folio. So starting with the bigger piece, and this is already my base page. We're just gonna match this up to the very edge. Hope I'm in frame, guys. Bear with me. And make sure everything is even. Hold it and pull. And while we're here, we're gonna do the same thing with the small one, and then I'll just come and burnish everything. And this is gonna go right on top. Right on top. Even, my page is crooked, let's bring it up. That's better, okay. And pull it out. Give everything a good burnish. And then we're gonna do exactly the same thing on the other side. So let me just open this up a little bit. Okay, that's that side pocket we didn't do in. I'm gonna remove this paper clip for a second. When I was thinking of doing this, I always wanted to do a zigzag and boy, you can get turned around fast. That's why I strongly suggest that you uh, turn everything around, you know, if you're gonna open it up To lay your piece down, that's fine, but make sure you go back and put it in the orientation That it belongs in because if not 
you can get turned around really quick and glue something on the wrong side. And then my other piece is this one. This is my pocket. I want to make sure it stays there. That's the pocket on the other side. Come on, big guy. Bear with. Be good. And then we're going to lay that up here. Make sure I'm even. And let me tell you, I love using black cardstock, but sometimes it's really difficult to see. Okay, I'm happy with that. And then I'm going to pull this up. Okay, I'm going to give everything a good burn. So those are the last two. Right, so this is going to... And then this is the pocket on the other side that I need to make sure I stick there. Okay. And then this, your gusses will always guide you too. You'll know what, which way to bend. So there it is. All the pieces are built and in there. Now, let's talk about magnets before we glue it into the folio. And then you can go and decorate Oh, you like. Okay, so this is our very front cover, right? When we flip, we have this mirrored pieces here. So you're going to need a magnet. Now, the magnets that I use are very small. Um, these are about, I want to say, three or four. No, they might be five mm by one mm. I usually put two okay um, just to make sure that it grabs so I know I'm gonna need a magnet here and I'm gonna need a magnet here and that means means that I'm gonna need a magnet here and here that's gonna match to that now if you have these large magnets that are super strong then one is enough and that's these. These are like 20 by 1 millimeter. 20 mm by 1 mm. If you're going to use that, you only need one. And then the same thing on this side. We know we're going to need a magnet here to hold this flap down and here for it to adhere to. Now, that usually serves as a reminder for me. When I'm cutting the paper, I need to lay magnets. That's my visual cue. Okay, we flip over again. These are pockets, so we're not going to need any magnets there. And then these are the pockets with the pieces. So for this to snap down, I know I need a magnet here, and I'm going to need one on this side. So that's the side I'm going to put it on. The same for this one. Magnet. And on the back side, I'm going to need a magnet. Right, because this is going to fold this way, and my magnet needs to be on this side. Okay, so that's the back of the book. Now we're going to look at the other side. So coming this way, again, you have these flaps. You can choose not to hold magnets. I love using magnets. I love you hearing the snap. Um, that's just me. Now with these, there's a trick to these. Right. You're going to need a magnet in the back that's going to adhere to this one. Right? So there goes your magnets. Now, when I lay magnets here, I don't need to put it on the back side here. What I'm going to do is lay my tape with the double sided facing out and the magnet there and then close it. The magnet will catch the magnet on this side. So in essence, I'm using two, four, six magnets. I don't need none on this side because I have them here. Again, I'll cover it again. So I'm going to need a magnet here and here, right, on the inside for it to attach to here. So that means I'm going to need one here and here. I don't need any here because the magnet, I want it on the back page. So when I lay my magnet out, the magnet is already adhered here. I take a piece of double-sided tape with the sticky side facing up, 
and the release tape on top of the paper where it won't stay. Let my magnet catch and then I close it. So I'll have a magnet here, 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 and here and here. And all three of them will be completely aligned one on top of the other. Here we don't need magnets, this is pockets. And then back here, again, you're gonna need same thing, magnet, magnet, this one to catch it, and the back one to just hold everything in place in the same alignment. So magnet here, 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 and just on the back cover. Or you can choose not to have magnets. You can um, have some kind of closure here, maybe a swing tab or maybe a piece of lace uh, underneath your designer paper. Leave yourself enough space from the hinge, you know, the little gusset that we left ourselves. And then maybe before you glue this one down or your designer paper, have the other uh, string and then you can just tie a bow. But that's it for the magnets. And this whole thing is going to now glue down into our base. So that's there. This will be here. And again, I don't glue everything together until I lay, start laying my papers. But that's where it'll go. This whole back piece will glue into your back base. So your back cover will now be super reinforced. And then for your closure on, on your cover, I chose magnets, so I had um, three magnets on this side and this side. Uh, you can choose to have a wrap around before you lay your paper. You can lay um, lace underneath your designer paper, let it come all the way around, and just um, stick out on these two sides. So this way when you close it, you have room to tie your bow. So they will come out on the sides here, up under the cover, designer cover in the back, under the designer sheets on the spine, and then stop right there, and then you can. But that's it, guys. I hope it wasn't so confusing. Um, I haven't been in my, my right frame of mind. Um, this has been a tough week. But... Um, I really wanted to give you the tutorial as best I could. Don't be afraid to leave me a comment down below if there's something you don't understand. I have no problem uh, recording a video showing you step by step exactly what I mean. I can always upload it to YouTube and send you the link privately. Don't hesitate to um, tell me um, that you didn't understand or that you know, I confused you. I completely get it. It's it's sometimes it gets a little difficult and especially with the zigzag. You can get turned around fast. All right, my friends, I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed um, the flip through of the collection from cradle to stage from decorate your life. I have a few sheets of stuff left over. This is my big, big project, um, but I will be using up the paper that I have left. As always, stay blessed, stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll catch you at the next one. Bye now.